Hello everyone, my name is Danny Felix and today I'm going to be reviewing the Inspector Nick sewer cam by Subtech. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing that we're going to be talking about is the self-leveling camera head. Now looking up front, we can see we have the protective skid and we have designed this in a way that it has ramps on the front and back end and that allows it to not get hung up and it's very easy to ramp up and over any transitions. The skid has three machine screws, make it easy to come off. And once off, you can see the stainless steel camera head housing. Looking at the front of the camera, you can see the LED lights that are controlled by the monitor. So holding the up button on the monitor, we can bring the lights all the way up. and all the way back down. Behind here, you can see on the spring where you can easily take the camera head off. So we include a camera head wrench and putting it on that spring, we're able to back this camera head right off. Looking inside, you can see these steel cables. Now these are aircraft cables that run up to the camera head. So if you ever were to get stuck and you had to pull this camera head out, it's, these cables are gonna bring this camera head back with it, so you're not gonna lose a, an expensive camera head. Behind that, we have the Sond, a 512 hertz Sond, uh, make this uh, able to be located underground. And then uh, from here, we'll start to talk about the cable. Now the cable on the Inspector Nick camera is really what separates it from other mini cameras. A lot of the other cameras on the market, for one, the cable length is only 100 feet. And if you look at the national averages from the vent to the city tap, you'll find that it's just not enough. Uh, with our cameras, we have 140 or 200 foot of cable. Now besides that, the diameter is a lot thicker than what you'll normally see. In the market, it's usually between six and eight millimeters thick, and we have a 10 millimeter outer diameter on this cable, or 9.9 .9 to be exact. Uh, what that means is this camera can be pushed all the way out to those maximum distances, 140 or 200 foot, uh, and it just makes it a lot easier to push coupled with a very flexible spring up front, we can really get through those sharp back-to-back -back turns and getting into smaller diameter pipes, we're able to make those turns and push all the way out to the distance. So th okay, next we're gonna be talking about the reel and the whole cable reel, the friction brake and the cable guide. So as you see here, the cable has this guide that allows it to be pulled out and pushed back in very easy. This guide can be adjusted uh, so if you have the cart laying on its back or sitting up or you just wanted to change it a little bit, it's very easy adjusted. The next thing you'll see on here is the friction brake and this will stop the cart or the reel from spinning. So if you want that cable locked in place, you can easily lock this uh, friction lock and to get it tighter, you can pull the lever out, drop it straight down and tighten it some more. And then the exact opposite to loosen it. And now our cable or our reel is spinning freely again. Behind here, you're gonna see the hub that the cable is actually wired into, and there's a built-in footage counter. So as this cable is coming out, we'll see the footage of the cable that is out of the reel. All right, we are now looking at the back side of the Inspector Nick camera. Uh, so the first thing you'll see under here is a Milwaukee 18 volt battery. So these are cordless cameras and we get anywhere from four to six hours of charge out of the high, up, high output battery. Um, these cameras can also be plugged in. Uh, if the battery does die, they're easy enough to just plug in. We have uh, foam pads on here and some backpack straps and it makes this uh, easy enough to throw on your back and carry up a ladder if you're trying to access the vent from the roof makes it a lot safer to carry than trying to drag up an actual cart behind you. All right, now we're gonna be talking about the functionality of the monitor. So starting from left to right, the first button we have is invert. Now that's just a screen invert if you do not have a self leveling camera head. Uh, makes it a little bit better, you can see a little easier. Uh, the next two buttons are up and down for the lights. So that is just controlling the brightness of the LEDs. And then the last button is gonna be our menu. So if we hit menu, the first thing we get is our transmitter, and that's how we would turn on the sawn to be able to locate the camera head. So we hit transmitter, and then we have 512, 874, 
The next is counter, which is the footage counter, and then next. So if we wanted to activate the sun, we just hit 512. And we can see here, we have a flashing 512 Hertz now. So going back into menu, we'll go into the footage counter now. And here we can reset or change from feet to meters. And then we can also get the model information of the camera here. We can exit. We'll go back in the menu one more time, hit next. Now we have text, clock, and mute. Uh, so if you wanted to put an address over the screen or text anything on there, pretty simple. Just hit text and go through the keyboard on the screen. We have clock. We can change the date, time settings. There's a mute button, but the easiest way to mute is just to pull the microphone out. Uh, it's kind of up to you whether you want to audio record or not. And hit back to go to the main screen. Uh, looking on the screen also, again, we have the boom mic. There is some output settings here for uh, different type of recording options. And then the power button here. Now turning the monitor, we can see our recording area. So down here we have our USB and we just put a flash drive in there. As you can see, as soon as I insert my flash drive, I'm waiting for a green light. Now that it has read my flash drive, I'm ready to record. So all I need to do is hit the red button. And now I have a red steady light that tells me I'm recording. When I'm done recording, I'm going to hit the recorder button one more time. I'll get a series of blinking red lights that tells me that the file is saving. Once I get that green light again, I now have my recording saved. The last feature on here, this blue light, is for the Wi-Fi hotspot. Now you are able to connect this to a phone or a tablet. There's many different features where that can come in handy, whether you're just letting your customer watch or you're actually going into a crawl space and not wanting to take the whole camera with you. You can just take the camera head and your device and uh, you can complete the scope. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that quick review of the Inspector Nick Sewer Cam by Subtech. Uh, remember, if you have any questions at all, reach out to us anytime. Our website is subtechmfg.com or you can call our shop at 209-668-5840. Thanks guys.